they're sitting in an actual beautiful high-rise hotel that they can now buy shares in. So it was very real setting for us. So today I'm happy to have Ed and Wackety. He is the CEO and founder of Red Swan. Ed, it's been too long. Welcome back. Thank you, Brandon. It has been too long, but thanks for inviting me. Well, it's absolutely my pleasure. So before we get into the news of the day, can you just give us a reminder as to what Red Swan is? Uh, Red Swan is a market leading platform of tokenized real estate. Uh, we're a marketplace that, that brings together institutional quality real estate with investors that are looking to buy fractional shares of this real estate. Uh, now that we're accepting cryptocurrency, it opens the door for anyone now with crypto to be able to convert their crypto into buying you know, high-quality real estate around the world. Oh, exciting stuff. We did hear some really big news last week. Can you kind of give us a rundown as to what was announced? Yeah, we had our reveal last week where we invited a lot of our clients, our guests, our investors, our ecosystem partners like Hedera and Stellar, Franklin Templeton. Uh, and we had a release where we showcased about half a billion dollars worth of properties that we've tokenized. Many were hotels and strategic areas, as well as apartment buildings, a fund that has mixed use uh, assets in it, as well as we've, uh, for the first time, tokenized $120 million worth of carbon credit forward. So we can actually help uh, the sustainability of, of uh, the ecosystem as well. So does this mean that you're, you're expanding out from real estate or was this just to kind of offset uh, the, the carbon footprint that, that you're dealing with? Well, we feel that the carbon footprint actually is a responsibility. It, it creates a responsibility for real estate in terms of sustainability, allowing us to be able to take uh, carbon credits that you know once were kind of the wild, wild west because they weren't transparent. It wasn't really organized. But now put on the blockchain creates this very true transparent vehicle that we could actually use to, to offset carbon uh, assets. You know, a lot of real estate emits carbon. Uh, but if you can now start to match the obligation uh, that a property owner has uh, with the actual carbon credit forward. Uh, now they can retire those carbon credits and create a a uh, neutral project, ESG neutral project, which we think is what many institutions are looking for. Well, well, that makes sense. One other thing that I wanted to touch on is we saw that you were making this announcement from the penthouse of a pretty impressive looking building. Can you tell us a little bit about the, this building in particular? Yeah, that was a Rivington on uh, the hotel on Rivington, which is a, a 21 story high rise uh, hotel. It's, uh, you know, an A quality hotel. They're renovating it to make it even a, a more luxurious hotel. But yeah, that was the first uh, tokenized hotel in Manhattan. We thought it was very important to actually have our clients or investors sitting in the actual hotel on the penthouse floor where they can see the rooftops of other you know, beautiful assets in Manhattan and know that this is now a real project that they're buying. There's no more metaverse or, you know, NFTs where you're kind of throwing things out there they don't understand. They're sitting in an actual beautiful high-rise hotel that they can now buy shares in. So it was very real setting for us. We also had eight other assets that we've tokenized on hotels, one on San Clemente Beach, one on Playa de Carmen in Mexico, um, we have, you know, some in the Hamptons on the East and South Hamptons. So all these destination points where we think people want to go for lifestyle, uh, we are able to find a hotel we can, uh, tokenize. And we think that'd be great for the overall industry of web three. So Ed, there's an awful lot of focus right now around making assets DeFi ready, you know, making them available as far as securities uh, within the DeFi space. And what I mean by that is not just tokenizing these assets and keeping them within, um, we'll say a walled garden, but making them available on the, the DEXs that we all know and love. This is being done by Swarm when it comes to equities like Apple and Tesla. Are you working on making uh, real estate DeFi ready? Uh, the answer is that it, absolutely we are. We are working to make it DeFi ready by, first of all, minting these assets on uh, uh, EPM uh, DLTs like the Dara so that the actual smart contracts will be able to push these uh, shares out to the DeFi world. We're also working with market makers that want to come uh, on board. They can actually be the last mile for liquidity. So this might wants to sell, uh, they would be the last offeree, but you know, we're not just going to have one market maker, we're going to have three to make sure they stay competitive as well. So we're 
definitely getting up and gearing up uh, for DeFi world. I think the most important part about the success of that is to have a lot of content, a lot of choices for the DeFi world to, to make. So they're not just looking at one property or one credit facility. They're looking at a variety of assets they can actually choose or even put them those assets into a into a fund as a portfolio so they can buy and also own all these assets for DeFi. We think that's going to be uh, very powerful for the industry. Well, my audience is going to be sick of hearing about this. I'm working now with Saucer Swap, one of the big DEXs within the Hedera space. And we're looking at everything from securities to precious metals, even venture capital bonds. We want to make sure that, you know, that people have access to every asset class possible. And that's the whole point, right? Democratizing these different asset classes, making sure that everyone has access to some of these asset classes that they may not have thought about in the past. So when we zoom out and looking at the full landscape, what are some of the strategies that people should be considering? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, we had this nice discussion last week with Anthony Scaramucci, this fund, so much of his holdings are within cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin. And we split the term of putting your crypto to work, actually borrowing against your crypto with the sole purpose of buying income producing real estate. When you do that, you're actually making your uh, lending costs lower because now the borrower or should say the lender uh, has two forms of collateral they can hold on to. They had your cryptocurrency, which may be your Bitcoin or your Ethereum, plus the real estate. So you saw the crash that took place you know, last week with regards to cryptocurrency. Had people taken that strategy of borrowing against Bitcoin, buying into real estate. I mean, when I say buying into real estate, this is all income producing real estate that produces uh, the yield that can actually pay for the borrowing costs. So let's uh, just break it down. For example, if you're able to borrow off of your Bitcoin at 6% interest rate and you're able to buy a real estate fund like Altus is paying 10% yield, uh, well, that 10% yield will pay the 6% borrowing costs and that 4% harbor trash can be used to buy additional crypto, additional Bitcoin, for example. That's a very safe and low risk strategy that I think we can get people to start uh, practicing because it will help, again, to take the worry and the volatility out of the crypto and make it more streamlined so you actually start generating income while you're waiting for your crypto to go up in value. It's one thing that I've been thinking about a lot lately is just the the financial knowledge, the, the education that's been taking place. People initially get into crypto, but because of all these different strategies that are out there, people are, be, uh, are becoming much more literate on all of the different investment classes out there. So, Ed, I don't want to take up too much more of your time here today. Is there anything else that you'd like to pass on that we haven't touched on? Well, I like the fact that we are looking at the hospitality industry from the standpoint of lifestyle and that, you know, we've convinced all of our uh, sponsors who own hotels to create NFTs. These are NFTs that creates a membership base uh, for that particular property or group of properties. So now they are they getting yield from the actual property that's going to be equivalent to or more so than the treasury, but also getting, you know, free night stays at that property, discounts on F and B and food, I mean, food and beverage discount additional stays. Uh, and this is a 10 year term period that they're putting out there. We think that's going to be significant for the industry just because now people get to get a lifestyle reward from their investment rather than just a you know, boring you know, return. Uh, that, that makes perfect sense to me. Ed, again, it's been too long since we've had you on before. I'm really excited that you're continuing to do things with Hedera and build on the Hedera network. Good luck with everything that you have coming up, and we hope we can have you back real soon. Thank you, Brandon. We love Hedera, and we're going to keep working with them, and they're you know very, very supportive in RWA, and we think that uh, it's very important to continue this relationship. So thank you, and look forward to coming back on your show. I'm now posting these interviews of Hedera Builders independently to my channel. The community, influencers, and media outlets are free to use this content to spread the word on what's being built on Hedera. Once they're all uploaded, you'll be able to go to my channel and search for whatever topic or team you're interested in to find more information. Or you'll be able to get the most recent Hedera news by watching the latest HBAR Weekly update. So check them out.